So, hello everybody, we are here to discuss Patrick Melrose episode 2, having already loved episode 1, and I believe I gave it maybe a 10 out of 10. Yeah, I, I, don't, know if, I don't know if we were scoring it, but we certainly, certainly loved it. I it thought was, it was one of the best individual dramas, mm -hmm. episodes of a drama I'd seen in a long time. Exactly, and I said the equivalent of an Oscar would have to be given to Benedict That's Cumberbatch. Right. And I thought rather cleverly, episode two, which was a completely different prospect, set in 1967 at um, uh, Patrick Melrose's father's gaff in France, virtually has nothing of Benedict Cumberbatch in it. And I think it made, if this is possible, and I've, ne I've never come across this, you're leaning out of shot. Um, and I don't even know if this is even a thing that's ever happened before, but the absence of Benedict in episode two made episode one even more powerful. Mm, I know what you mean. It made me think about everything. It made me immediately want to see yeah. episode one again. It's a supremely clever series. Yeah. Brilliantly written. Oh my God. Hmm. Uh, I was, because we know, we know that he was raped hmm. from five years old by his father. So right from the very beginning of the episode when you knew we were going to be seeing hmm. it from the child's perspective, I was just unnerved when you was just... Well, the whole thing had a hum running throughout. It was so uncomfortable yeah, to watch yeah. the whole... Pro I can't... I mean, I, I don't even know if I'm up to really describing how... what it was. Hmm. It, don't you think it was an extraordinary piece of telly? Yeah, I mean, and, and I thought it was a total contrast to episode one, which was zippy, fast, hallucinatory, yeah. druggy. This was, by contrast, so calm. Languid, almost. Languid. It had that balmy heat of the Mediterranean and the Pro Provence or Tuscany, wherever it was set. And, uh, and it had that sort of, that slight, the sort of boredom that can creep into, obviously, a wealthy house and, and a wealthy family. He's, you know, the father was rattling around in this house, playing the piano, full of regret, full of pent-up fury that he couldn't have been the pianist. You know, clearly there was the reference to the fact that his father, Patrick Melrose's father, had been brutal. His father, in turn, had been brutal to him. And, and so I just thought it was an incredibly rich backstory. I mean, if you want the true definition of a whole episode dedicated to the backstory of a character, this is it. Yeah. This is it. And every character was... So brilliantly drawn, drawn mm. so brilliantly acted, not acted, inhabited. Mm. Again, I believed, every, didn't you? There, was, there was, mm. wasn't was one sticky no. character. But even the younger, when I first saw him in the first few moments, and that horrendous well, yeah. sexy, I thought, oh God, is she going to be the... I do. But um, I thought she was really good. And I also like, you know, um, I forget the name of Patrick Melrose's father. What was his name? Is it Rodney or something? Or... I can't remember. But anyway, I mean, Melrose's father's friends, I thought, you know, very, very powerful in their sort of cowardice around this huge character. And the obviously bullied them all through Obviously their bullied them, but also there was, I thought, I thought the actor from The Crown who played the Queen's sort of personal assistant, who is such a great, oh I mean, he's such God. a great, he's he's such a great actor. actor. Um, I just thought he was remarkable in, in his sort of, in his eyes. He was just looking at what he knew Patrick Melrose's father was but also knew that he couldn't step beyond and he was kind of, step, you know, he, he, he just didn't have the courage to, to criticise or condemn and he just had to sort of go along with it. And then you had the other chap who was the professor or the writer who was a sort of gibbering wreck. And but, but what was running through the whole episode was at any point you could have believed that all the adults at this party actually knew mm. that this child was being abused. Mm. They all knew him well, they knew his brutality, mm. they knew his cruelty, every one of them had suffered at the hands of his cruelty, and yet this poor little boy, mm. who clearly looked traumatised, and they're all clinking their champagne and mm. eating their foie gras, and it was just, the yeah. It was just interesting seeing that class of people and that, that, that abuse that could go that could go unnoticed to the rest mm. of the world, what you could get away with in those circles, you know. But I thought the little boy, I mean, credit has to be given to the boy who played the young Patrick Melrose. I've never seen a young boy of that age perform so richly in a part. I mean, right down to little moments, I thought the moment where he was jumping on the well was such a rich moment in the telling of a character's desire for danger and wanting to push the boundaries and looking over literally a rock bottom at the bottom of a well 
And so you sort of see this sort of prefiguring of what's going yeah. to happen in his life. Well, and also the suicidal tendencies because Absolutely. his life was so horrific. But those just those touches to part them within a child and a child actor to be able to perform them. So like him, him looking down the stairs and throwing himself down the stairs. You know, those moments, which I just thought... Which just show told us the you addict so coming. much about Benedict yeah. Cumberbatch. And I think there are only three cut forwards to flash forwards to Benedict in cold turkey. Yeah. So, this, in a strange way, this episode's presented as an enormous cold turkey flashback um, and, and incredibly rich. What did you think of Jennifer Jason Lee, his mum? Oh my God. Such I a thought complicated it was character. Such a complex character. Yeah. In the hands of a lesser actress, the whole thing would have fallen to pieces. I thought, I absolutely agree. I thought that she Give was... Because Pimple's thinking how she played it. She was petrifying in a whole different way mm. to Patrick Melrose's father, who was yes. obviously a cruel and brutal man. But she was so lost in her addiction mm. and so utterly selfish mm. for her own survival from this, you know, within this brutal marriage. And you see the moments where she loves her son, mm. but she is not going to step out of her her little circle of safety that she'd made for herself, well, didn't she, with her drugs and with yeah. the denial and with her... But she was... But in... like she actually says at one point, I couldn't even imagine being in the same room with him. She was no. so terrified of him. No. And yet she went off. I, I believe that his character, his mother's character, knew full well what that he was, was being on. sexually abused by his father. Well, I felt that. I felt the inference was there. But I thought she moved around the, the, the programme in an anaesthetised fog in oh, such so a good. brilliantly layered way. There's one scene that really, really stuck with me and I felt increasingly anxious and it was the scene in the Ferris wheel where she was just yeah. sat and they were waiting and yeah. then the impatience of whatever narcotics or alcohol was running through her system was kicking in and her family, fr her female friend was looking at her and... Because you're and right. And I hated her. Oh, yes, I mean, she I. was fragile. She was abused herself. She was a battered mm. wife, of course. She was controlled by this monster, mm. this sado, sa sa sadist. I mean, it's sadist. There's no oh, yeah. two words about it. And yet, I just couldn't forgive her all that she was going through because she just couldn't save her son. No. No, 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 no absolutely. Just... And do you remember in the first episode of Patrick Melrose when he's just heard that his father's died mm. and then he gets a message from his mum and he says oh my mother as vague as ever oh, yes yes and it, it, like you say it takes you back to that first episode doesn't mm. it all these things and you think my god you've always just neglected him it was about neglect mm. wasn't it everyone was neglecting mm. that boy family friends mothers fathers the nanny and which saved him. And I thought what's so clever about it, and it is semi-autobiographical, I remember sort of, you know, in the 70s, there was, a, there was far more a hands-off approach to kids. You know, kids were allowed to wander around. And I think, by and large, if you weren't wandering into danger and trouble and abuse, you were lucky. But it was not surprising that it happened as often as it did because, you know, it reminded me of a time when, when kids were just, you know, just wandering around and come what, what may would happen to them. What about the awful bit where he's sat on the stairs, the little, the young Patrick Melrose, he's had the most horrific day you could possibly imagine. Mm. His father's picked him by his ears, his oh, father's God. raped him and, he, and he's sat on the stairs in this dinner party and the father instigates this conversation with his old Eton mates about what happens to you as a child means absolutely nothing, has no effect on you mm. whatsoever to who you're going to be. And they all join in on that. And there's the discomfort, even from the right on American woman mm. who knows there is something going on and, who, mm. and in fact storms out. Mm. Well, even she neglected him. Yeah, well, Why I did thought, you but, storm out? But I thought that, that was so amazing. I, I almost remember parties as a child where I felt I could attach to someone who had some coherence Kindness. in a party yeah. and that moment he reached out to her and said please don't forget it took me back to well, countless she said, I'll come back. it took me back to countless occasions where she kind of made a gesture to but didn't really follow it through no. she calls up the stairs but he sort of sits back and he knows it's not happening and that just absolutely broke my when heart when he said you won't absolutely come back I heart. know you won't broke my heart my but, heart was broken oh 20 30 times yesterday mm. through that episode you know, this is this is a, a show, this is a story that is not a passive watch. You're going to be involved in these people's lives and you're going to be mm. really turned upside down. So if you... 
Oh, I just like to say you don't witness the actual no. rape. If that's well, no, everything is inferred. It's it. really important. Yeah. Everything is very much inferred that you're not going to see. And but it, you have but no doubt. In a weird happened. way, I'd say it makes it even more powerful and yeah. even more unsettling as the fact that you don't even hear anything. You you no. just you have a knowledge that something's happened behind a door. But I just wondered, I mean, what did you make of the actor who's playing the father? What do you think of that of that character? I mean, what a an unsympathetic brute of a man. Do you, do you have any understanding of him? The only way... Well, okay, you know me. I always, when I, I, when say, I yeah. see a bad person, I look to see I mean, what's making I'm, I'm bad. I'm thinking specifically, so, for example, of the scene where he thrusts his hand into so, the boiling bath. So, bar. yeah, he's raped his son. He has brutalised his son. Before he's done that, he's said to his son, he's told his son this story about... About calluses. About calluses and about... The, yeah, about, more, the more they get harder, the less pain you feel. Yeah, by so. walking across rocks mm. and getting it. So this little boy is standing there knowing something terrible is going to happen to Ugh. him. And basically forgiving himself just before he's... And then it's like, take your clothes off, blah, blah, blah. And he does what he does. And then a while later, you see him sat next to this mm. boiling hot bath. He's very mm. drunk, but very still. He's on and the he loo, isn't he? he just puts something? his hand into the bath, the father, and just keeps it there. And you see, when I saw that, I thought... You have been brutalised yourself. Yeah, yeah. You have. You were that little boy. Mm. And it was done to you what mm. you're doing to your son. Mm. Still utterly unforgivable. But for, you always have to have in, ev in any villain in mm. a story you've got to have a chink of sympathy and understand otherwise you kind of lose you'll lose i think that interest. was the only i think that one moment was the only moment I, yeah, sympathy is a strong word i'd say it's the only moment you thought for a minute this there's a cause and effect that's happened in this man's life i'd say for my summary of it i'd say it was one of the one of the sort of strangely tenderest portrayals of something awful happening in the early years of a person's life and having met the older Patrick Melrose it made me want to go back to Brogan 1 scoop him up and hold him even more and it's a very unusual thing where episode 2 and I don't know if you do this is watch episode 2 and then go back and watch episode 1 again I will watch it again because it's, it's my thing that I always say when do we lose sympathy for the mm. child and we just furious with the adult mm. so you could look at Patrick Melrose as the raging selfish mm. addict and you go, what a despicable man. Why didn't he just pull himself together and, mm. you know, stay off the smack? And then you then you see the five-year-old child when there was no sympathy for that child yeah, whatsoever. Absolutely. Which raises the whole question around addiction because there's a lot of people who are of the opinion, you're greedy, you're an addict, it's your yeah. fault, you're making decisions as an adult. And then you look at the conditions that they've gone through as a child and you think, well, I can kind of understand why you've got issues and I can understand why you've got self-esteem and you've got trauma and you've got post-traumatic stress from being raped. So at what point does responsibility stop? Mm. At what point does responsibility start? It's, it's such a tricky subject. I mean, subject. the scene, which was a brilliant illustration of self-harming and how it works, was, you know, he's standing at the top of the stairs, he's mm. been raped an hour or so before by his father, his mother's just not done anything, and he's standing with a glass and he just breaks mm. it into his hand and cuts his hand so it's pouring with blood mm. and then hurls himself down the stairs and, and you hear a scream and the father just continues to put his tie on, doesn't yeah. he? Continues Chilling. to get ready. And you think, that little boy was so traumatised that all he could do was cause himself terrible pain. Mm. So he cuts his... And that's what we see in episode one, the constant mm. putting the heroin into his mm. arms. And I mean, my God, this is not an easy watch, this no, series. but I have to say, impeccably directed, impeccably shot. Faultless. Everything is faultlessly faultless. acted. The only thing that I would say is a real negative, apart from obviously the experience that the boy goes through, is it's completely put me off figs. And we love figs. I love figs. But if you haven't watched it, you'll know. You'll, you'll understand, you'll understand when you do. And if you have watched it, you know exactly what we mean. Yeah. It's not for the faint-hearted. No, this not. series. Be warned. Mm -hmm.